Welcome back to Market Call. I'm John Erlupin on the Bloomberg Market Set, getting ready for our program at the top of the hour. Paul, we're going to have a good conversation with Tim Gitzel, the CEO of Cameco. Obviously, they had a big deal announced today, and we're going to have a great conversation as well on the road ahead for the markets. Obviously, everyone talking about when inflation peaks, when interest rates start to cool or at least increase at a slower pace. Uh, the soft landing scenarios, not fighting the Fed, all of these things are going to come into play when we have a good conversation with uh, Randy uh, Quarles, a former vice chair at the Federal Reserve, and Ed Klissold, who's a, a great student of market history. He's with Ned Davis Research. All that coming up at the top of the hour. Back over to you. Thanks a great deal, John Oakman, giving us something to look forward to on Bloomberg Markets right after this show. Time now for top picks from Chris, Chris Blumas. He's been our guest. Alphabet is number one. Uh, we, uh, that's the company we uh, would prefer to, I would prefer to call Google, but Alphabet's the name. G-O-O-G-L is the ticker symbol. Chris? Yeah, I think this is a, the, just a wonderful business, um, you know, very well run. And the valuation is massively discounted. You know, if you look at the kind of the stated PE on this, um, you know, it's 16, 17 times. You strip out some of the excess cash and you strip out some of the, um, um, the, the investments in their other bets and their cloud services business. This is a business that could be trading anywhere from 12 to 14 times earnings, you know, debt free balance sheet and lots of excess capital. So another business that can, you know, prosper um, in, in difficult times. And I think as more and more uh, advertising dollars transition online, Google's very, very uniquely positioned to, to grow revenues and cash flow. The flip side is, is and the reason why it's 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 heavily discounted uh, is you know the the threat of, of uh, regulatory you know regulatory pressures you know and so you know over the last few years Google has come into the eyes of regulator for a number of their businesses are so dominant so I think you know this is something um, you know you got to keep an eye on but I think you know even longer term whatever the solutions are I think they create a lot of value for shareholders and so I think this is one that you, you know you definitely want to consider investing trading in. at lowest share price in about a year and a half. Would this be one of those amazing opportunities that you ref referenced at the top of the show? Absolutely. I think this is, this is an astounding opportunity uh, in a business that has a lot of avenues to create value. Okay. Artist REIT is number uh, two, ticker symbol AX.U on the TSX. It's obviously a member of the Canadian REIT sector. Yeah. And, and so this is one. I've talked about this one, um, you know, on the show before. Um, you know, so diverse uh, artists is a diversified REIT, and I think there's nothing as unloved uh, as a diversified REIT. So if you if you take a look at artists' valuation, you know it's trading at uh, around six times FFO, has a dividend yield, you know, north of six and a half percent, and if you look at its discount to its net asset value, it's about it's greater than fifty percent. So I think, you know. There's lots of uh, ways to find value in the market today, but I think what makes this one very unique is there's a catalyst in place. You know, there was a new management team and a new CEO that was brought on last year. So, you know, relative to other REITs that could be heavily discounted, this one is heavily discounted and there's a catalyst in place. So I, I really, really like this one. Can, can the REITs do well in a rising rate environment because their distributions look a little less attractive when rates are rising? Absolutely. I think, you know, uh, if you buy them for that reason, but I think in terms of, you know, monetizing assets and creating value. I always just think of even in a situation like artists, you know, you're going to get paid to wait. Uh, and, and, you know, man, the management team has so much flexibility to, in terms of uh, buying and selling assets. Um, so I think, you know, that's really the opportunity there. Constellation Software is top pick number three on this day. This is the software consolidator, i.e. buyer. It buys a lot of software uh, companies, mainly business software. CSU is the ticker symbol on the Toronto Stock Exchange. The uh, price on this one, $1,800 and change per share. Yeah, so it is, Constellation, like you mentioned, is a software consolidator. And they have... You know, really two, you know, big, big, unique advantages that other companies don't have. You know, they have this infrastructure that allows them to do small acquisitions. And, you know, these acquisitions they do are typically, you know, you know, five and ten million dollar software companies. They've done hundreds of acquisitions um, over the years. And then their capital allocation framework. And really what this is is a, ca a cash flow compounder. And, you know, there's really nothing like this um, out there uh, because most companies, as they do acquisitions, they just by, uh, you know, the law of large numbers, they have to target bigger deals. And Constellation made a deliberate attempt to stay true to what they do and focus on inefficient markets. So they built out that infrastructure to keep doing small deals. And, you know, you don't get an opportunity to buy this one very often. You know, it's, it's very well known. It usually trades 
at a very, very, um, you know, high multiple. And I think in terms of, you know, what you're getting today, you know, the free cash flow yield is right around 4%. And, you know, price to cash flow, it, it's a little bit less than 24 times. So it's a little bit less of a bargain when compared to the other top picks. But I think relative to what it, it can do for you and, and the quality of the business, um, you don't get a lot of chances to buy this one. I think this is a great opportunity. What are debt levels like at Constellation? Because that can be a real hazard in, a, in consolidation stories if the acquisitions are being financed by debt. We think of Valiant Pharmaceuticals many years ago. Yeah, I mean, and it's, that's absolutely true. And I think, you know, Constellation does um, have... Um, you know, acquisitions are financed with debt, but the way that they do it is similar more to private equity, where they're able to kind of finance the asset at the operating level. So, you know, it's not, the hold co is never at risk. And w how they operate and why they've been able to kind of keep their growth going, uh, which has been exceptional and it hasn't slowed down in the company's history, because they have six mini constellations under the constellation umbrella. The constellation is a holding company for six independent companies and these are where the acquisitions take place and so i think you know where the acquisitions and the debt is um, is placed is at the operating company level so it never puts any of the other silos or the holding company at risk so in terms of kind of um uh you know um, risk management it, it's very very high and in terms of debt levels they're not excessive F a fundamentally different type of investment than a pure play software company like for instance open text another canadian software company it is. It's different than open text because open text is more uh, is more reliant on kind of senior management to find deals and do deals. Where um, Constellation is more. It more depends on its operating subsidiaries, and that's why the acquisitions have never had to slow down. They've just kind of uh, been able to keep. If you, if you look at the share price performance between Open Text and Constellation, it's it's night and day, because that infrastructure that Constellation built is so unique. So I think you know between the two, I definitely would would favor Con, uh, Constellation. Okay, Chris, thanks a great deal on behalf of our viewers for all your insights today. Thank you very much. Chris Bloomis was our guest here. His topics again: Alphabet, Artist Reit, and Constellation Software. Just before.